Hello, and welcome to our next episode of On the Shelves at ACPL. Today, we are going to be talking about realistic fiction, uh, general fiction, literary fiction, historical fiction. And so we're kind of combining a couple of different categories. Uh, as you probably know, genres sometimes are hard to uh, separate out. A lot of books fall into more than one category. So this category is our general literary and historical fiction. So let's get started. Our first book is The Immortals of Tehran by Ali Aragi, and it features a young man named Ahmad. Ahmad has grown up with a multi-generational family. His great-great-great-great-grandfather is still around. So we have a little bit of magical realism in this book as well, but his great-great-great-grandfather uh, tells him stories about how his family is cursed. And Ahmad grows up believing this as a child and then as an adult thinking, well, something must be going on because all these bad things keep happening to my, or my family. But this book goes through his entire life, all of his different careers and things that happened to him and also ties into the revolution in Iran. So if that sounds interesting to you, pick up The Immortals of Tehran. Our next book is Little Family by Ishmael Bia. This is the story of five young people, two teenagers and three children that are younger than that, uh, who are living in an abandoned airplane because of the turmoil and strife in their country. They've lost their, uh, you know, their birth families. And so they have formed their own family. Uh, the two older ones go out to work, go out in, into society. Uh, one finds a job where he can work and support uh, the, 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 the all, all of the children. And the, one of the other older ones, the young lady, uh, she falls in the thrall of the elite who are still uh, doing the things that quote unquote normal kids do. And so this story really is about how you choose your family, uh, and especially in situations like this, that family does not have to mean blood. It can be those who you choose to spend your life with. And also, uh, how do you decide when to follow your desires and when you do what's best for your family? Our next book is The Confession Club by Elizabeth Berg. A group of women start a supper club, but at one supper club, one of the members shares a shocking confession and their supper club morphs into a confession club where women can come and get advice and share the ups and downs of their lives together. And as this book opens, two new members join and just at the right time because they need help. Our next book is Shiner by Amy Jo Burns. This is set in a holler in the Appalachian Mountains. The family lives an hour away from the closest town in West Virginia. The father is a preacher and preaches in a gas station every weekend. The mom and daughter see no one other than uh, the mother's best friend who travels through every once in a while uh, to see them. When tragedy strikes at one of his uh, religious services, he is handling a serpent and something goes wrong. They have to figure out what their next step is going to be. Wren, who is the teenage daughter, has to figure out to understand her history so that she can figure out what to do and what her future ought to be. Our next book is Sunrise on Half Moon Bay by Robin Carr. In this book, we have two sisters, 
Addie and Justine. They, they were born 20 years apart. So by the time Addie was born, Justine was already an adult. When their parents get sick, Addie drops out of school and Justine supports her and her parents with money, but Addie does the caregiving. And when her parents finally do pass away, Addie's dreams have been put off for so long, she really doesn't know what to do. Meanwhile, Justine, Ha, is struggling with, has struggles in her, in her life. Uh, her, she and her husband are heading towards divorce. And so the sisters must figure out how to develop a new relationship with each other, to support each other, to love each other, because when you have nothing else, you have the love of your family. Our next book is Lincoln's Mrs. Lincoln's Sisters by Jennifer Chiaverini. If you have not read any of her books, she is an excellent writer of historical fiction. And this story picks up in the 1870s uh, when Mary Lincoln, the wife of the late Abraham Lincoln, is, has tried to commit suicide and her sisters are trying to figure out why. I mean. They know why, but why you know, is she sane or sane and desperate, or is she really insane and does need to be committed? Uh, this book does an excellent job of talking about that sisterly love and talking about the historical period. Uh, things that I did not know until I read the book jacket here was that uh, Mrs. Lincoln and all of her sisters were Southerners. They all uh, married well and had interesting lives uh, that perhaps Mary, because she was married to a president, uh, rose higher, but she also lost both her husband right in front of her and three of her children. So if historical fiction is your thing, Mrs. Lincoln's Sisters looks like a really great choice. Our next book is The Silent Treatment by Abby Graves. In this book, we have a married couple who, by all appearances to the outside world, have a great life. But their secret is that they have not spoken to each other in six months. Not a word over breakfast, not a word uh, when they go to bed at night, they haven't talked. And then the husband finds the wife on the kitchen floor with sleeping pills around her. Possibly she has tried to commit suicide and is now in a medically induced coma. And he is sitting beside her bed thinking about what had happened, what led to all of this, and can he find his voice and share with her why uh, she has gotten the silent treatment. Our next book is Queenie Malone's Paradise Hotel by Ruth Hogan. In this book, a mother and daughter go to live in Queenie Malone's Paradise Hotel. And the daughter just loves being there, loves the eccentric group of men and women that she meets. And then inexplic inexplicably, her mother sends her away to boarding school and she doesn't understand why this has happened. When her mother passes away, she, as an adult, goes back and she and Queenie explore her mother's past, what may have led to their estrangement and why her mom sent her away and then can she find happiness again. Our next book is The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo. This story uh, starts with the marriage of a couple in the 1970s and the consequent birth of their four daughters, all of whom now in the present time are having their own struggles. The story jumps back and forth between the past and the present and the present. Uh, a young man is back in their lives. One of the daughter, daughters gave him up for adoption 15 years ago, and he is back. But interspersed with his story and with their story and their reaction to all of this is 
that both the great things that happened as they were growing up and the things that were not so great things, but all things that shaped them and shaped their lives. And so this story talks about the love of family, the love of sisters, how we can lean on our families when things go wrong. Our next book is Simon the Fiddler by Paulette Giles. In this story, Simon is a young man. This is set during the Civil, Civil War. He has, has a very youthful, youthful face, and so he has so far been able to lie his way into not being conscripted for the Confederate Army. But towards the end of the war, he gets caught. He is put in the army. However, because he is a gifted fiddler, he becomes part of the regimental uh, band. And so he escapes from having to fight on the front line. He is playing at a dinner with both Confederate and Union officers and falls in love with the governess of one of the Union Army's officers' children. And Unfortunately, she is an indentured servant. She has three more years to serve. So Simon goes around Texas playing as a musician, but remembering this beautiful Irish governess that he wants to go back and find one day and marry. Our next book is The King at the Edge of the World by Arthur Phillips. This one goes further back in time to the 1600s, to 1601, when Queen Elizabeth is dying. Uh, of course, she is childless, and her advisors are trying to figure out whether King James VI of Scotland is really Protestant or whether he ha is pretending uh, because some a lot of his other his family have been catholic so they enlist a young man to who to be this kind of a spy master and to really delve into what you know this potential king's leanings really are so this is a fascinating story of how power was exchanged uh, in situations like this in England and how the difference between Protestants and Catholics were just so in, inflamed at that time period. Our next book is Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. This is a sequel to Olive Kitteridge. Olive is back. She is still a little cranky, a little, a little uh, particular in what she believes, but as she enters her next decade with a new marriage and a new family, she is still uh, interacting with the interesting characters in her main town, and some new characters are introduced in this book, but you always get back to Olive and her interesting views on the world. Our next book is Mum and Dad by Joanna Trollope. The couple, the mum and dad, uh, left England 20 years ago to start a vineyard in Spain. But now as they are getting older and ailing, uh, the, their children must come to the vineyard and take care of their parents. And each of the Children have their own lives, have their own uh, beliefs of how the vineyard ought to be run, what should happen to their parents, how we should deal with them, and family strife ensues. So this is another book talking about that, that love of family, and in this book, can that love of each other overcome all of your differences in beliefs of what Ought to happen to your parents and to their vineyard. Our next book is Redhead by the Side of the Road by Ann Tyler. In this book, Micah is 
a middle-aged man who has has a very prescribed life. He likes his schedule. He likes everything to be in its place. And he has his life the way he wants it. But now his woman friend, because he refuses to call anyone above the age of 30 a girl, uh, has been evicted and is thinking maybe that she's ready to move in with him. And meanwhile, a teenage boy shows up at his front door, says, hi, I'm your son. So this Poor man who likes his life very uh, organized and orderly is now thrown into the chaos of figuring out what to do with his longtime woman friend, as well as this young man who might be his son. Our last book is Catherine Howard, The Scandalous Queen by Alison Weir. She is writing a series of books about all of the Tudor queens, and Catherine is the next queen to receive this treatment. Uh, so if you do not remember your history, uh, Anna of Cleve was the wife before Catherine. Catherine is young. She, her family throws her in the path of the, of the uh, king, and she is, was, is actually the cousin of a previous wife, but is evidently not too concerned about being beheaded. She is young. She is excited to be in court and excited to accept the attentions of the king. So she does end up marrying him. She loves living in the lap of luxury. Uh, but the question is, can she bear him a, a son? And to find out what happens to Catherine. And if you don't remember your history and know already, uh, this book delves into uh, many aspects of her life and would be fascinating for anyone who loves history. So those are all of our literary fiction, historical fiction, general fiction books for today. Uh, as always, if you are interested in getting any of these books, you can go onto our website, click on catalog, enter your information and put them on hold, or you can call us at any of the branches and we can put the book on hold for you and then we'll let you know when it comes in. So thank you very much for joining us for On the Shelves at ACPL, and we'll see you next time.